I'm going to show you this machine I made. It's called an electrostatic field mill. And we're going to start with a reusable shopping bag and a egg carton. And I'm just going to rub these together. And now I'm going to start my machine up. So when I rubbed those together, what was happening uh, was, among other things, charge was moved from one to the other, just like when you rub a balloon in your hair. So one of them now has positive charge on it, and one of them now has negative charge. I'm going to move my shopping bag close to the front of the field mill, and you can see we get this sine wave showing up on the plot in red. And notice that the magnitude increases when I get closer and decreases when I get further. Also notice that this sine wave goes down and then up. Now I'm going to switch to the egg curtain. And we get the same thing, except this one goes up and then down. But otherwise, it's exactly the same. Now, what this machine is doing is actually measuring the electric field from the charge. This is positively charged. And that means that the electric field is coming this way, coming down, going into the field mill where it is measured. Before I explain how it works, I want to motivate it by explaining why the obvious thing to do wouldn't work. So let's say we have this field, and you know the thing you might think is just put a plate here, put a plate here, and then measure the voltage, and then measure the distance, and then you can divide and find the field would be equal to the voltage divided by the distance. Um, <laughs> but this won't work because unavoidably some current will flow through your meter and there will be some resistance in your wire and so then you'll get an additional voltage from that and that'll be a DC current you'll get a DC offset to your already DC signal and it'll be very hard to distinguish one from the other. One way we can solve that DC offset problem is by mechanically creating an AC signal, and that way we can ignore the DC component of whatever we end up with. So we do that uh, with these uh, components right here. So this electrode and this electrode are connected to each other, and when a field is flowing into them, then you'll get charge accumulation on the surface, and we can predict that accurately with Gauss's law. When we spin this grounded blocker plate in front of them, it'll block the field, and so there will be no field and no charge accumulation. And if we repeatedly spin it back and forth, then repeatedly the charge will accumulate and go away. And that'll happen through the wire that we have that goes to our amplifier circuit. And so what we've created is an AC uh, current signal. That AC signal will flow down these wires into this amplifier circuit, which is impossible to look at on the breadboard, but I do have a little picture of the general idea. We've got the electrodes here, and then current flows in. We've got a trans-impedance amplifier, and then just a regular like inverting amplifier. The trans-impedance amplifier will turn current into a voltage and then you just amplify that voltage again because uh, the biggest gain I could get here is based on the size of R1. I only have uh, one mega ohm resistor so gain of 10 to the 6. We need to amplify a little more to be able to see anything. Now that we have an amplified signal we can read it with the Arduino. And the Arduino can also read a signal from this Hall effect sensor which detects when these magnets I have taped to the blocker plate pass underneath, and that then tells the Arduino when the blocker plate passes this position, which makes it easier to plot. The Arduino will then send all the data by the serial connection to my laptop, where I have a Python script that plots the data.